بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد We'll continue tonight, inshallah, with the hadith of Jibril. The hadith of Jibril from Imam Anawi's 40 hadith, Arba'in Anawi, 40 hadith of Imam Anawi. And we started the second hadith on Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, qala bayna man nahnu julusan inda Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, thata yawm idh tala alayna ar-rajulun shadidu bayad al-thiyab, the hadith when the companions were sitting with the Messenger والسلام, and a man came dressed as it is explained in the hadith in all white, clear white, no stains, no signs that he was traveling on his clothing with jet black hair. And the Sahaba said that nobody knew him. Nobody knew who he was, nobody in Medina knew him. And he didn't look like he was traveling. So it was something they considered to be strange. It wasn't normal that the traveler didn't have anything on his clothing. No dust, no stains from the traveling, no wear and tear. So it was strange that nobody knew him. And at the same time, he didn't look like he was traveling. So we reached to the point of the hadith where the man came and sat directly in front of the Prophet Sallallahu placed his hands on his own thighs, and then he asked the Prophet والسلام, he said to him, أَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِسْلَامِ أَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِسْلَامِ Tell me, what is Islam? What is Islam? طيب. Usually, usually, if someone asks a person, what is Islam? What is the usual answer? Huh? What is the answer that we usually hear if somebody says, what is Islam? A religion. A religion. Tayyip. They say, what, what is your religion? Like, what is, they might say, what is a Muslim? You say, you're Islamic, what do you believe? A person that fear Allah's high way up. Say it again. A person that fear Allah's high way up. A person that fears Allah's high way up. Tayyip. It's a non-Muslim asking. No, no, there you are. A non-Muslim asking. You work with somebody non-Muslim, they come and they say, well, you're a Muslim? Yeah, I heard about y'all. What? What is Islam? Huh? So, so, so what is Islam? Yeah. It's a religion. It's a religion. I'm pretty sure they know it's a religion. They know it's not Christianity. Mm-hmm. Right? And they know it's not. Right? They know we're not Christians. They know we're not Jews. A huh? A person of faith. Like, this man came and he asked the Prophet, he said, Akhbirni an Islam. Yeah, you are. Three questions. That hadith, the three questions. It's referred to as the hadith of Jibril. So he said, Islam. Yani Islam. Meaning, he wants to know what is the reality of Islam? What the, what is it? What does the religion entail? Right? What is the belief of the Muslim? What do the Muslims believe? Right? And Shaykh Fuzan Hafidullah he says, the innahu la bud. من معرفة حقيقة الإسلام فلا يكفي أن الإنساب أن الإنسان ينتسب إلى الإسلام It's not enough. He said it's a must that every, we all have to know what is Islam. What does Islam require from us? What are the tenets? What are the fundamentals of Islam? He said it's not enough that a person just says I'm Muslim. It's not enough that a person just says I'm Muslim. He says, لِأَنَّهُ إِذَا لَمْ يَعْرِفْ حَقِيقَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ لَمْ يَعْمَلْ بِهِ Because if a person doesn't know what Islam requires from him or her, it's impossible that they're going to act upon Islam. Is it possible that a person is going to practice the religion and they don't know what the religion requires from them? What are you supposed to do what you're not supposed to do? Right? And we covered this last class, this is just a briefing. And then we went on, he said, فَالْإِسْلَامِ لَا يَكْفِي فِيهِ الْإِنْتِسَابِ مَعَ الْجَهَلِ It's not enough that a person claims to be Muslim, but they're ignorant of the religion. They don't know. They have no knowledge of what they're supposed to do, what they're not supposed to do, what they're supposed to believe, what they're not supposed to believe. Right? So when Angel Jibril came, alayhi salam, he asked the first question, he said, أَخْبِنَنِي an الْإِسْلَامِ And the Prophet ﷺ gave him an answer. And the answer that he gave him, 
was al Islam and Tashada and La ilaha Allah, wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, wa to Qim al Salah, wa to Tia Zaka, wa to Summa Ramadan, wa to Hudj al Bayt, and Istatat Ilahi Sabila. He responded with the five pillars. He said, Akhbinin al Islam, what is Islam? He responded with the five pillars the Shahada, the Salah, mm -hmm. huh? you know the five pillars? The Shahada, the Salah, paying a Zakat, fasting Ramadan, and making a Hajj for the person. Who has the ability? This was the response when he said, "Akhbirni an Islam." What is Islam? Tayyib, and we covered this last class. Just as a briefing, Tayyib. And then he mentioned Sheikh Fozan that these are the can, these are the arkan, these are the pillars of Islam. But this is not the whole of the religion. But these are the pillars. The religion is based and it stands on these five. But there are things outside of the arkan of Islam that are also from the religion. <clears throat> and he mentions the ayat where Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu udkhulu fi as-salmi kaffa. O you who believe, enter totally into al-Islam. Everything. Meaning, udkhulu fi al-Islam kullihi. Meaning, take everything that comes with the religion. Fala ta'khudhu ba'dahu wa tatruku ba'dahu. So we don't take some of Islam and leave some of it, right? The ayah says, "Udkhulu fi silmi kafa." Enter into Islam wholeheartedly. Not take this because it fits what I'm trying to do today, but I'm not going to do it tomorrow because I'm trying to do something else, right? And that is that ayah is in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number two hundred eight. In Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number two hundred eight. So now he moves on to the meaning of al-Islam, the general meaning, the general meaning of al-Islam, or huwa al-istislam lillah azza wa jal, bil-tawheed, wal-inqiyad lahu bil-ta'a wal-bara'a min al-shirk wa ahlihi. Al-Islam is to submit to Allah Jalla wa Ala, right? To submit to Allah Jalla wa Ala. But how does a person submit to Allah Jalla wa Ala? And this is the definition of that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, that he gave, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, he also used the same definition from Sheikh al Islam in Thalatul Usul that a person submits to Allah Jalla wa Ala how bit tawheed by singling Allah Jalla wa Ala out in all of worship. This is submission, submission to Allah through tawheed, or making sure that we perform all of our worship, all of our worship. It's for Allah Jalla wa Ala only. And it's only for Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And he'll go into more detail. Well in Kiyadullahu bit ta'a. And also submitting by acts of worship, ibadah, worship. Obedience to Allah Jalla wa Ala. This is a form of submission that a person obeys Allah Jalla wa Ala. He says, Well Bara'a min al shirk and staying away from a shirk. وَأَهْلِهِ And staying away from putting partners with Allah, worshipping anyone or any other thing with Allah Jalla wa Ala. To stay away from a shirk is a form of submission to Allah Jalla wa Ala. And it's important, brothers, that a shirk, putting partners with Allah, is not only worshipping Isa alayhi salam. It's not only the worship of Jesus or the worship of trees or the worship of the sun. All of that is shirk. Right? All of that is shirk. But those are not the only thing. Worshipping stones, worshipping the water gods, worshipping ancestors and graves, all of that is from shirk, putting parts of the law in worship. But also from shirk, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, is a riya, showing off, which is a major for the inner city where we come from, something that we, you know, most of us come up in an environment where showing off is part of the culture. That's normal, Right? doesn't make it right but the reality is is for a lot of people showing off is something that is encouraged but Islam teaches us the opposite that showing off a riya is a form of shirk minor shirk as the Prophet Sallallahu described it that a person stands and they do some type of action they do some type of worship could be salat that they stand and they beautify their salat because they know people are watching them so they try to pray the most perfect salat that they can pray because they know that someone's watching them. And at that point, they're not praying 
Huh? They're focused on somebody else watching. They're focused on the compliment that a person may give them for their prayer or fasting or giving sadaqah. Or giving sadaqah. That a person gives sadaqah, possibly, <coughs> so that people could say that they are generous. MashaAllah, this brother has a lot of money. This sister has a lot of money. She gives sadaqah. He gives sadaqah. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Ar-riyah. Ar-riyah is a form of shirk, as the Prophet sallallahu said. So, we can't be deceived in thinking that, you know, I don't worship a cross, or I don't worship this, or I don't worship that, so I'm cool. As a shirk. Ar-riyah is a form of shirk, minor shirk, showing off, meaning a person does the worship, not focused on Allah, Jalla wa'ala, but they're focused on the people that are watching them, or the people that are listening. Maybe they're reading the Qur'an. It's the month of the Qur'an. They're reading the Qur'an, so they see people read, people are watching them read the Qur'an, so they beautify their voice even more, or they raise their voice so that the people can hear and maybe praise. They're seeking praise, or they want to be heard. It's a form of minor shirk that we have to be careful of. Tayyip. So he goes on, and he says that these arkan, as he mentioned, these arkan are only, or not only, but they are the fundamentals, the pillars, as there are more things inclusive of Islam. Islam is vast. But these are the things that the religion is built upon, that every Muslim has to, has to believe in. Okay. So the Prophet sallallahu when he said, "Akhbirni an al-Islam," inform me what is al-Islam. He responded, alayhi salatu wasalam, with the five pillars. And these five pillars, the five pillars, the shahada, the salat, the paying the zakat, fasting Ramadan, and making a hajj. These five pillars, as the ulama say, these five pillars, hadhi arkan al-zahira. These are things that are apparent, that can be seen by people. Wadi. It can be seen. If a person comes here and takes shahada today, takes shahada today, he stands in front of everybody and he says, repeat after me, and everybody's watching, right? And they say the shahada, right? A witness. Everybody's bearing witness. If a person comes here and prays, everybody can see a person praying. If a person comes to pay zakat, right, somebody's going to see him go to drop the money. Clear? If a person fasts Ramadan, huh? Even though, even though, we don't know who's fasting and who's not, but the assumption is, the assumption is that the person is fasting. It's Ramadan. They might come and say, SubhanAllah. Huh? SubhanAllah. It's fast. It's kind of rough for me today. Anything. Right? Something that the people know. And making hajj, of course, everybody can see people making hajj. So these things are dhah here. They're apparent. It's apparent. So he responded to al Islam with things that are apparent. And at this specifically, dealing with al Islam and al Iman. Some of the scholars, they make a difference between the two, al-Islam and al-Iman. Because when you ask him what is al-Iman, akhbirni an al-Iman, he responded with things that are internal, that can't be seen. And tu'mina billah, that you believe in Allah. He said, what is al-Iman, what is faith? That you believe in Allah, which is something inside that you can't see. You can't walk up to a person if they're not dressed like a Muslim. They don't have any sign of al-Islam on them. You can't walk up to a person and discover or distinguish if they believe in Allah or not. Right? At Iman. He responded with Iman with those things that are internal that can't be seen. So Sheikh Abdul Razak, or I'm sorry, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, in his explanation of 40 hadith, as there are many, many, there are a lot of explanations for 40 hadith, and we can't use all of the explanations, but I try to uh, combine different benefits from different explanations. At this point, he said, Hafidahullah, Ajab al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Jabreel, indama sa'alahu an islam bil umur al zahira. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Jabreel asked him, What is Islam? he responded with the things that are apparent, those things that we see people do salat, zakat, hajj, the things he just mentioned. Wa indama sa'alahu an al iman, ajabahu bil umur, bil umur al batina. And when he asked him, when Jibril asked him, what is al-Iman, what is faith? He responded with the things that are internal, that you can't necessarily see. That you believe in Allah. That you believe in the angels. You can't look at somebody and tell them and, and distinguish if they believe in the angels or not. That you believe in the messengers. You can't look on a person's face 
until if they believe in the messengers or not, right? So the things of, of Iman, he responded, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he responded with those things that are internal that can't be seen on a person. He said in both of these words, Al-Islam wal Iman, min al-alfaad al-lati, idha jumi'a baynaha fi al-dhikr furriqa, baynaha, baynaha fi al-ma'na. When Al-Iman and Al-Islam are used, sometimes they're used with the same meaning. Meaning, a person can say Al-Islam and they mean Al-Iman. Wadi? Islam is what? Right now we, we say Islam is what? According to the Hadith, Islam is? Pillars. The five pillars. The Shahada. Zakat, Ramadan, Ramadan fasting, Hajj. Huh. That's only four. You said the Salat already, right? Huh? You said Salat. Shahada, Zakat, and Zakat. He said that. So we got the Shahada. We got the Salat, Zakat, fasting, Ramadan, and Hajj. Right now, we're saying that. Islam are the apparent, these five things that are apparent. And we said Iman is what? Those things that are not apparent. You can't see it inside of a person's heart. Belief in the angels, belief in the books, belief in the messengers, belief in Allah, belief in the last day, belief in the Qadr. Those things you can't see. Sometimes it says Al Iman, but it means Al Islam and Al Iman. It means all of them together. Clear? Sometimes Iman is used to cover the five pillars which are apparent and those things are in the heart, all of it. Sometimes Islam is used for the five pillars that are clear, apparent, and it's used for the things that are inside the heart. And sometimes they're separated. They have different meanings. Thayyip, when does this happen? This happens when the word at Islam and Al Iman are mentioned together in the same text. Okay, they're mentioned together. When they're mentioned together, they have different meanings. Like the Hadith of Jibril, Jibril said, "Akhbirni an al-Islam." So he mentioned the apparent things. In the same text, in the same Hadith, he said, "Akhbirni an al-Iman." Right. So the name, the word Islam and Iman, they come in the same Hadith. Therefore, they make a distinction. They say, okay, if they come in the same Hadith together like this. That means Islam are the apparent things and Al-Iman are the things that aren't apparent. Clear? If only one word is mentioned in the Hadith, if a Hadith only mentioned or an ayat only mentions Al-Islam, that means Al-Islam covers the apparent and the things that aren't apparent. Clear? Same thing for Al-Iman. If Al-Iman is only mentioned in the ayat or Al-Iman is only mentioned in the Hadith, Al-Iman covers everything. Those things that are apparent and those things that aren't apparent. And this is why sometimes you might see in a translation of a book, you may say, I thought it meant this. It says Iman, but it's talking about the pillars of Islam. That's because it's according to the text. So it's according to the text how the word would be translated. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the, the principle that is used for words that come, sometimes they carry the same meaning. Two words in Arabic can carry the same meaning. They can carry the same meaning, and at the same time they can have a different meaning. For example, Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلْ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Allah says in the Quran, and whoever desires he says, in the ayah, it says, غَيْرَ Islam." Right? It doesn't mention Iman in the ayah. In the ayah, it only uses the word, Allah uses the word, Al-Islam. طيب. Whoever desires غَيْرَ Islam دِينًا A religion other than Islam, فَلَنْ يُقْبَلُ مِنْهُ فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ Then it will never be accepted from them. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِنِينَ And in, in the hereafter, that person will be from the losers. Being as though there's only one word mentioned in the ayah, which is al-Islam. We understand that al-Islam here means whoever desires anything other than the five pillars and those things that are not apparent. Belief in Allah, the angels, and the books. And the same thing 
if al iman is mentioned. If only one is mentioned, it covers both. If only one is mentioned, it covers both. If they're both mentioned at the same time, Islam are the apparent actions, the five pillars, and al iman are the internal, the belief that is in the heart that a person cannot see. Tayyib. The Prophet Sallallahu said, firstly, and took me that. I'm sorry, Al Islam and Tashhada and La ilaha illallah. And Tashhada and La ilaha illallah. Fa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. So he started off the first pillar, Al Ruknu al Awwal, Al Shahadatan, which in reality is two, is really two Shahadas. Right? We say somebody took Shahada, right? But it's really Shahadatan. It's really Shahadatan. It's really two of them. Right? They bear witness that what? Number one, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. And then they say, Wa ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Right? I believe that I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the messenger of Allah. So they use the word ashhad, ashhad twice. So he says here, Ashahadatan. A shahadatan, which is the two shahadas, which they is considered one. Does anybody know why? It's literally, literally, it's two shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Shahadatan, but we say shahada, huh? Sheikh. Yeah, two parts because the affirmation and negation. There you are. Tayyip, let me rephrase the question. It's really shahadatan, but we say shahada. We say a person, who says, nobody says, this brother took shahadatan yesterday. Does anybody say that? La, right? We always use the singular. He took shahada, she took shahada, alhamdulillah. But in reality, they make, they bear witness twice. They don't bear witness one time. Does anybody know why it's referred to as shahada and not shahadatan? Huh? It's not a trick question, but... I think you already know, but it's just something to be wary of, huh? Same thing like you just said with the uh, with the Islam and the Islam and the Islam. When they mention together, like it comprises one thing. You can't have belief in the law without Allah, without having faith in this. Jay, Jay, because one cannot be established without the other. One cannot be established without the other. Jay, can you say that again? Say it again. <laughs> you can't have faith, belief in the law subhanahu wa ta'ala without having, without it coming from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You gotta have faith in both of them or you have no shahada. One can't stand without the other, basically. Tayyib, uh-huh. and that's what he says. He says, the end of who? Huh? They're basically holding each other up. They go together. They, they go together. La tughni ihdahuma anil ukhra. That one of them can't be upheld without the other. Right? Mm-hmm. He's going to explain why. Follow Shahida and La ilaha illallah. Wa ankara anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Fa innahu la tasihu shahadatuhu. If a person was to say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, that they bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah, but they deny that the Messenger, alayhi salatu was was the Messenger of Allah. And the Shahada is not valid. The Shahada is not valid if they only bear witness. They say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. But they say, Muhammad being the messenger, la, 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 la. Right? He says, this shahada is not valid. And the same thing is the opposite. وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ شَهِدَ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يَعْتَرِفْ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ لَمْ تَنْفَعْهُ شَهَادَتُهُ بِالْرِسَالَةِ The same thing. If a person said, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger, alayhi salatu was salam. But I don't bear witness that. Allah Jalla wa'ala is the one who is worthy of worship alone. But I do believe he's the messenger, but I don't believe that he should be, Allah should be worshipped alone. I said, this shahad is invalid. You can't have one without the other, and he's going to explain why. Tayyip. Fashahadatu an la ilaha illallah ma'naha ifradullah bil ibadah. When we say ashadu an la ilaha illallah, the meaning is what? That the person bear witness, bears witness that none deserves the right to be worshipped except Allah. None. 
There's no, nothing should be worshipped except Allah. طيب. This is fundamental. This is basic. Islam 101. This is Islam 101. And at the end of this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that Jibril came to teach you your religion in this hadith. He came to teach the religion in this hadith. That the shahada and la ilaha illallah ma'naha ifrad Allah bil ibadah. That a person knows and they understand that when they worship any form of worship, that that worship that we do, every time we do a worship, that we're seeking Allah's reward. That we don't need the praise of anyone. We don't need a pat on the back. We don't need a pat on the back from anyone for praying our salah. We don't need a pat on the back from anyone. That we know that we perform our worship and our reward is with Allah Jalla That we single Allah out in all of our worship. Wa shahadatu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah ma'naha ifrad al Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam bil ittiba' wa al ittida' alayhi salatu wa salam. And the shahada that anna Muhammadan Rasulullah is that a person bears witness and they understand and they also it's a form of singling out that Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam is the only one that is to be followed he's the example he's the only one that is worthy of being followed and this is the shahada to Muhammad and the Muhammadan Rasulullah why because he is the one that Allah Jalla wa sent and he is conveying the message so he says, فَلَيْسَ الْمَرَادُ بِالشَّهَادَتَيْنَ التَّلَفُّضْ بِهِمَا فَقَطْ So the shahada, the shahadatan, these two shahadas, is not something that a person just says like it doesn't have a meaning. The shahada carries a serious, serious meaning. It's a heavy meaning that's carried in the shahada. It's a heavy meaning that's carried in the shahada. To the point when, one of, when the sahaba were going to war, and there was a man, and then somebody was standing over him get ready to kill him. So when he knew he was about to be killed, he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Right? He killed them anyway. Right? And this Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he reprimanded the one who killed him based on the statement. Once they say the statement, it's a different story. It's a different ball game. It's a different ball game when somebody makes the shahada. Become brothers and sisters in al-Islam. It's different now. Based on a person saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Based on that, the person becomes, we become brothers in Al-Islam. Allah said that indeed the believers are brothers. So he says it's not just a statement that is to be said. He says, That a person, it's a must that they're, they're acted on. So, أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَا اللَّهِ Meaning, أَعْتَرِفُ وَأُوْقِنُوا بِأَنَّهُ لَا مَعْبُودَ بِحَقٍ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That I admit and I have certainty, I'm certain with no doubt that there is none worthy of worship. بِحَق None has the right to be worshipped except Allah جل وعلا. None has the right to be worshipped except Allah تبارك وتعالى. And at this point he's going to explain why the translation for La ilaha illallah what does La ilaha illallah mean? The translation. Hmm? Huh. La ilaha illallah. None has the right to be worshipped with Allah. Shit. Right. There's, no There's no God but Allah. Huh. Any others? Is it one translation or is it many translations? Many, many translations. They mean, the same thing. they mean the same thing. J. There are many translations, but they don't all mean the same thing. They don't all mean the same thing. They don't all carry the same meaning. They don't all carry the same meaning based on the understanding of what does the shahada entail. Tayyip, and he's going to explain it now. Taqdeer al-kalam la ilaha bihaq. What's meant, what's meant by la ilaha, and it goes into the Arabic language, but we won't go into all deep like that. But generally, la ilaha. That la in front of ilaha is a nafi, nafi on little gents. We won't go deep into that, but it's a negation of every ilaha. If we sit here, and this is how he's going to explain it. Does everyone in the world worship Allah Jalla Wa'ala? No. So that means people are worshiping what? Other than Allah. 
So we can't say there's no God but Allah. People have other gods that they worship. Right? People worship the sun. They worship the moon. They worship Isa alayhi salam. They worship Jesus. Some people worship rocks. They worship the cow. Right? And he mentions all of this right here. There are other things that people worship. But those things are not worshipped. They don't have any right to be worshipped. That's why they say, تَقْدِلُ الْكَلَامِ بِحَقْ لَا مَعْبُودَ بِحَقْ There's none that has, to be, that has the right to be worshipped except Allah. We can't say that La ilaha, la ilaha Allah means there's no God but Allah. There are other gods. That's not a correct statement. There are other gods. There's a bunch of them. The water god that they do on the doom day. Huh? There's a bunch of gods that people worship. So we can't say there's no God but Allah. There's other gods. But which God has to be right to be worshipped? Which ilah has to be right to be worshipped? Allah. Allah Jalla So we say la ilaha illallah. Yani meaning there's none worthy of worship except Allah. Others are worshipped. People worship other than Allah but they have no right. They shouldn't be worshipped. They don't have the right to be worshipped. And this is what he brings here as he says, فَهُنَاكَ إِلَّا هُنَاكَ آلِهَا كَثِيرًا بَاطِلًا There are many false gods. Many. He says, فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ الشَّمْسِ وَمِنْهُ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ الْقَمَرِ Some worship the sun, some worship the moon, some worship the stars, some worship trees, rocks, right? Plenty of things that people worship. But all of those things are falsely worshipped. They don't have the right to be worshipped. That's why لا إله إلا الله لا معبود بحق there's none that has the right to be worshipped except Allah. And Allah says in the Quran, clarifying that there are other gods that are worshipped. Huh? There are other gods that are worshipped. He says in Surah Al-Hajj, Ayah 62, قال تعالى, ذلك بأن الله هو الحق وأن, من وأن ما يدعون من دونه هو باطل. Allah said, that is because Allah, He is the truth. هو الحق وَأَنَّ And those that they call upon, that they pray to, other than Allah, are false. Who are bothered. So Allah even confirms that there are other people that people, people worship graves. We might, just because we don't see it here. Here we might see one type of shit. Right? We might see one. We might see people. We say, okay, they worship Esau, they, they worship Jesus. They pray to this, they pray to this, right? We might not see the people who worship trees. But it's a world. The world is not contained inside of Philly. Right? It's a whole world. People worship animals. Some people worship private parts. Some people worship the water gods. Some people worship... There's all kinds of things that people worship. But Allah says that those things, other than Allah that they worship, all of them are bothered. All of them are false. They have no right to be worshipped. <coughs> so he says... So it's not correct to say that there's generally just to say there's no God but Allah. That's not correct. The understanding that is not correct because there are the gods. And if someone argues argues that, how do you explain it? You don't say there's no God but Allah. You say they have a God, they worship the sun God. They worship the moon God. They worship this one. But all of those are worship. They're false. According to La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah meaning none of those things should be worshipped except Allah Jalla he says, وَمَعْنَا أَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ In the meaning of, when a person takes shahada, and they say, I bear witness, <coughs> they say, I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah. يعني, it means, أَعْتَرِفُ وَأُكِرُّ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ أَرْسَلَهُ إِلَى النَّاسِ كَافَةً they, A person, they admit, they believe with sincerity. With no doubt, with no doubt, that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a messenger. One is one of is a messenger from the messengers of Allah, that Allah sent to all of mankind. <clears throat> I mean, He didn't just send Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The message is not just for the Arabs. <clears throat> it's not just for the Arab. It's not just for the Arabs. Even though He spoke Arabic, right? The Quran is in Arabic. The message is not restricted to the Arabs. And if anybody made Hajj or Umrah, you see that a large portion, if not most of the Muslims, are not Arabs in the world. The largest population of Muslims in one country is not an Arab country. The largest population of Muslims in one country, the country, is not Arab. Right? This is not an Arab religion. And it's not a religion for only 
only blacks. It's not restricted to African Americans either. Allah sent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the messages for mankind. The messages for mankind is not to be restricted to a group of people you like and a group of people you don't like. A group of people that look like you or look like me or they don't look like me. Right? And this is Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. To be a witness that the message, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi came, he was a messenger from the messengers of Allah, and Allah sent him to a Nas Kafa, all of mankind. Ila Thaqalain al Jin wal Ins. To the jinn and mankind. He says, Falabud min al bi risalatihi zahiran wa batinan. So a person has to believe internally and externally that the Messenger وسلم, is the Messenger of Allah. There can be no doubt that Muhammad وسلم, is the Messenger of Allah. And he's going to explain why. He says, Zahiran bi lisanihi, that a person has to say it. Right? They have to say it. Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. He said, وَبَاطِنًا بِالْقَلْبِ That a person has to believe it in their heart when they say it. طيب. They have to say it with the tongue and the heart has to match. They have to believe at the same time in the heart that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of Allah. طيب. What if a person says it in their, they say it with the tongue but they don't believe it in their heart? Is it possible? You need both. In order for it to be valid, you need both. So, the person who says, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Number one, you would never know by looking at them if they believe it in their heart or not. You would never know that by looking at a person. But, but if they internally, and Allah knows, Allah knows, if a person came and they wanted to do something funny and they tried to do something, they try to sneak amongst the Muslims, and it happens, it happens. So they say, yeah, they take shahada, but they don't believe it in their heart. Is the shahada valid or no? No. As it has to be vahir with the tongue, and they have to believe in the heart the same thing that they said with the tongue. And he says, أَمَّا مَنْ يَشْهَدْ أَنَّهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ بِاللِّسَانِ وَيُنْكِرُ بِالْقَلْبِ فَهَذَا munafiq. The one who says it with the tongue, but they don't believe it in the heart, then this is the hypocrite. That's the hypocrites why, right? And they were hypocrites during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu That they said the Shahada, right? But they didn't believe in their hearts. They didn't believe in their hearts, what they said with their tongues, and they were described as hypocrites. As it comes in Surah Al-Munafiqun. In Surah Al-Munafiqun, the Surah, the hypocrites, the first ayat, the first ayat of the Al-Munafiqun, قال تعالى إذا جاءك المنافقون قالوا نشهد إنك لرسول الله if they come to you and they're saying that we bear witness that you're the messenger of Allah, right? Allah says, Wallahu ya'lamu innaka la rasulu. And Allah knows you're the messenger of Allah. Wallahu yashhadu inna al-munafiqeen la kathibun. <coughs> but Allah bears witness that the munafiqeen are kathibun. They're lying. They're lying in their statement that they believe that you're the messenger of Allah. Even though they said it with their tongue, Allah declares that they were lying in their hearts. <coughs> the munafiq. So the person who says it with the tongue but don't, doesn't believe it in the heart <coughs> falls under the ruling of a hypocrite. But it's important, brothers. So you can't walk up to somebody and just start calling people hypocrites. A hypocrite is not a Muslim. A hypocrite is a person. They say, Ashadu an Allah, for example, and they don't believe it in their hearts. They're not Muslim. But that's not for us to walk up to brothers and start calling people hypocrites. As hypocrites, uh, hypocrisy is two types. Two types of hypocrisy. There's two types of hypocrisy. Does anybody know the two types of hypocrisy? Anybody? Two types of hypocrisy? The hypocrisy, huh? That's close. That's close. Speech and actions fall under the same category, though. Those two fall under one category speech and actions. Huh? The hypocrisy that most of us usually, inshallah, we talk about. We shouldn't be running around calling people hypocrites, number one. But people say, he's a hypocrite. I, I ain't messing with him, he's a hypocrite. Don't do business with him, he's a hypocrite. She's a hypocrite, right? Hypocrisy, a form of it is kufa. One po portion of hypocrisy is disbelief. And that's this one. That a person says, Ashadu an la la la, and they don't believe it in their heart, right? They're not Muslims. 
The other form of hypocrisy, and that's hypocrisy, ertiqad, in the belief system. That form of hypo hypocrisy has to do with the way a person believes. Their heart, they don't believe. They can say whatever they want, they know inside their heart they don't believe. Right? This munafiq is not a Muslim. The other one, form of hypocrisy, is hypocrisy in a person's actions. Where a person might say something and then they do the opposite. Right? I'm going to bring you this at 530. They never come. We turn around and say he's a, hypo he's a hypocrite. He ain't Muslim. He ain't Muslim. Because he didn't show up at 530 to drop off whatever he's supposed to drop off to you. Right? This form of hypocrisy is hypocrisy al-amani, with actions. It doesn't take a person outside of Islam. Not that it's okay, right? Or a person lies, right? They lie. Not that it's okay, but you can't make takfir. You can't take a person outside of Islam for telling a lie. You can't take a person outside of Islam for going back on their word. Not that it's okay. Not that it's not a sin, right? Lying is a sin and doing it, it's a sin. But to say a person's not Muslim is a whole nother level. This hypocrisy here is referring to the munafiqeen, munafiqeen who didn't believe in their hearts. Right? They didn't believe. They said the shahada, but they didn't believe. This form of hypocrisy takes a person outside of the Islam. They don't believe in Allah. They're just saying it so, you know, to gain some type of benefit. So it's a serious, it's a serious situation. It says... They never, they never internally in their hearts, they never believed the hypocrisy, the, the, the hypocrites on the time of the Prophet. They never believed in their heart that he was the messenger. But they said the shahada annaka Rasulullah to gain some benefit. To gain some benefit. Therefore, the shahada was invalid. He says, the same way of a person, they believe that he was the messenger in their heart. They believe that Muhammad is the messenger. But they never say it. They never say it. Is this acceptable? Huh? They believe in the heart. They believe he's the messenger, but they never say it. No, again, you gotta have both, vahiran and batinan. Ashhadu, to make the shahada, the shahada tan, as the Prophet ﷺ said, and tashhada, that you make the shahada, and la ilaha illallah. The shahada has to be, huh? It's a kalima, it has to be said. If a person refuses to say it, as Allah described, some of the people who refuse to say the shahada, then that shahada is invalid. The shahada is invalid. And all of this shows, brothers, all of this shows the importance of the shahada. And sometimes, at least here, it looks like it's a fad, something that, a phase people going through. And that's what some of the kuffar, some of the non, some of the, 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 the non-believers, they say that you're going through a phase. They're going through a Muslim phase, right? Because people are on and off that fast. The shahada is a serious, serious kalima. It's the strongest thing, the most beneficial thing that a person can say in their life. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. As a person is saved from the hellfire. The kalimat al is what protects people and saves them from the hellfire, from being in the hellfire forever. What saves us from being in the hellfire forever, after Allah's mercy, is the kalimat. That we bore witness that Allah Jalla wa Ala is, is the only one worthy of worship and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of Allah. It's a strong word to say, something strong. It's not something that should be just thrown around real quick. If I get married, Allah must die. I know I'm trying, you know, you can't marry unless you, you gotta be Muslim to marry, right? Oh, let me take you out of that. Right? It's real. Can't marry if you can't marry if you ain't Muslim, so you take shahad of Muslim marry. That shahad is heavy. So if a person he says, if they believe it in the heart but never said it also. And this is why, as it says in the Quran, he says, Aidan al Yahu and Nasara. يَعْتَرِفُونَ أَنَّهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ بِقُلُوبِهِمْ The Jews and the Christians, they knew in their hearts that he was the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? From the time of the Prophet some those Jews and those Christians, and even now, they knew that he was the messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam. He was the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. لَكِنْ جَحَدُوا هَذَا They refused to say it. 
They refuse to say it with the tongue. They refuse to say it with the tongue. And Allah said about them, Allah said about them, Qala ta'ala, Alladina Ataynahum al Kitab. Those who we gave them the book, the Jews and the Christians, Ya'rifunahu. They know him. This is what Allah said, Ya'rifunahu. They know him. Ya'ni, they know Rasulullah. They know he's the Messenger of Allah. Allah said, Kama Ya'rifuna Abna'ahum. The same way that they know their own sons. They knew it was him. They knew he was the Messenger. Like, come on, like, sit down. They knew he was the messenger, but they refused to say it. They refused to say it, showing the importance, the importance of the shahada. فَلَا يَكْفِي الْإِعْتِرَافِ بِأَنَّهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ بَاطِنًا فِي الْقَلْبِ مَا عَدْمَ النُّطْقِ بِلِسَانٍ لِمَنْ يَقْتِلُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ So he says, lastly, it's not enough that a person believes it in their heart and they don't say it. If they have the ability to speak. We have some people, they might not have the ability to speak, right? Like if, had, if they don't have the ability to speak, we're not going to get into that. That's a whole different issue. The issue we're talking about, the person that had the ability to speak, it's not enough to believe in the heart and not pronounce it on the tongue. ثُمَّ إِذَا شَهِدَ أَنْهُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ حَقًا فَلَا بُدْ أَنْ يَتَّبِعَهُ And this is important, brothers. If we, if we bear witness, because we all held accountable يوم القيامة for the shahada that we take. When we say that, we're all responsible for the actions that we do as a Muslim. If we believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the messenger of Allah, then it's upon us to follow the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasallam. If we believe that Allah is the only one that has the right to be worshipped, then it's upon us to follow the commandments of Allah jalla. Tayyip. And we're all, every, every individual is held responsible for their own actions. So, Allah says in the Quran, commanding us, commanding us to follow the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, in more than one place, in numerous ayat throughout the Quran, Allah commands us to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Qala ta'ala, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu, ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasoola wa ulul amri minkum. Allah says, O you who believe, O you who believe, Obey Allah and obey the Messenger and obey those who are in authority amongst you. The command is to obey Allah and His Messenger. Was anybody here yesterday for the class? Yeah. Huh? The asl, if Allah commands us to do something, or the Messenger وسلم, commands us to do something, the origin is that thing is what? Huh? If Allah gives us the command, or well, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives us a command, they command us to do something. This is important, this is important. If Allah commands us to do something in the Quran, or well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commands us to do something in the Hadith, whatever the command, does that mean, does that mean that the command for us is recommended to do? Obligatory to do? Huh? Obligatory. The origin is that it's obligatory. It's wajib. When Allah commands us to do something, the origin is that it is obligatory to do whatever he commanded us to do. Sometimes we find commands from Allah or from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that are not obligatory. That are not obligatory. How does that happen? Huh? Sometimes we find a command from Allah or from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they're not obligatory, meaning they're recommended. How does it move from one level to the next level under it? Huh? Nah. Huh? Allah commands to do something. Lord, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi commands us to do something. Do we have to do it all the time? Every command is obligatory? Nah. Some commands are obligatory. Some commands are recommended. Wadi? Clear? Everybody with me? For example. For example. I won't use that. I don't want to strike a nerve with that one. But it's real. It falls under this. Because it's, huh? What makes it different? What makes it different is sometimes you find a command in the Quran, right? In the ayah. Or you find a command in the Sunnah. The Prophet says, do this. It commands a command. You have to do this. You have to do this. 
but it's what's called a sadif. There's another ayat or another text or another hadith showing that you don't have to. Showing that the Prophet ﷺ didn't do it. Or showing that somebody didn't do it and the Prophet ﷺ was there and he allowed them not to do it. When something like that happens, it removes it from one level of obligatory and it drops down to the level of being recommended or sunnah. Right? That's why you find some things. Is that sight? That's it, then? That's why you find sometimes. Some things, sometimes. My bad. That's it. That's why we find sometimes the. Uh, somebody will call you that? Sometimes. Huh? One minute? Sometimes we find some of the commands of the Prophet or commands in the Quran that may not be obligatory, but you may find in the book it says recommended. You may say, why is it recommended when it's a command? Because not all commands fall under the, uh, the label of being obligatory. And we'll stop there because the breaking of the fast is on our next. Which they call it Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shadu wa la ilaha wa ta'ala.